Yeah, I'm Pete Najeri, and this is The Take for Market Rebellion on this beautiful Thursday. Another unbelievable day here in Minnesota. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now today. Absolutely gorgeous. We got the sun out. Going to be a little bit of a golf day maybe today. You know, you have to get out there and have a little bit of fun. Got to take advantage of it while we can because come next Tuesday, uh, we're going to go right back into that whole winter wonderland that we started off with a couple of weeks ago. But let's look back to what was going on post-election day yesterday. Absolutely an explosive move to the upside. Unbelievable how fast and the velocity of what we were, we were watching on that move to the upside. Didn't really hold on as well as you may have wanted to if you're a bull, but still nonetheless an absolutely explosive move to the upside. We actually eclipsed 28,000 yesterday in the first hour, and we kind of settled in and just kind of hung around that area up about 650 to 800 points for the bulk of the day. And then by the end of the day, it started to give back a little bit of something. You look over at the Dow Industrial, up over 800 plus and actually closed 370. That's a pretty significant move late in the session. So that was that was interesting. The S&P, of course, 3,400. We are over 3,300. Now we're over 3,400. And by the way, uh, we are approaching 3,500 in a hurry. NASDAQ up four plus percent yesterday, four and a half percent on the highs, up about 500 points, finished up still very, very nice, not too far off of those highs, up around 430 points on the day. So a really uh, unbelievable day in terms of all the major indices and the explosive moves. We were talking about 27,000 not long ago, and here now we're talking about 28,000 in terms of the Dow. 3,300 on the S&P. Now we're talking about 3,500 in the S&P. So it really does give you a little of a, a bit of an example of just how much of a move that we are having this week. First three days of the week, extraordinary moves, and, and the markets are absolutely flying again today. Yesterday, volatility got absolutely slapped. It was down about 18% yesterday, trading down, and it was, it was trading right around in that 29 level, it seemed, for most of the day. Let's not forget just how recently we closed above 40 on them. Uh, and and I've, I think I told you guys this. I'll tell you again for the take listeners here, uh, whether you're YouTube or Market Rebellion or wherever you are, when you have a day closing on the VIX over 40, that oftentimes gives you a projection going forward multiple months of a, very, a pretty daggone significant move to the upside. And this has only been a week or so, but we've had a pretty substantial move to the upside already. So maybe maybe some of those numbers are going to start getting shifted around a little bit on what the duration is and how long it's going to take for some of those kind of moves. Volumes yesterday, extraordinary. We hit 32.7 million contracts yesterday. So we're back up above that magical 30 million per day mark. That was a big day yesterday. And it was spread across a lot of different areas. But what really stood out for me was, once again, Apple dethroned. It was NEO yesterday that had a huge day, about 1.6 million contracts for NEO. Apple, about 1.5 million, so pretty good, but a little bit off of its average of about 2 million per day. And when you look at NEO, it was well above, about 2.5 times normal volumes. Facebook, Tesla kind of round out the top group, all over 500,000 contracts yesterday. So a pretty busy day all the way across the board. And a lot, as you can tell by some of the names that I was reading off there, Facebook, Tesla, Apple, Neo, you get a little bit of a sense of, of where a lot of that activity is focused on what specific areas in the marketplace. By the way, did not get nearly enough coverage yesterday, and I tried to hit it yesterday. I'll hit it again today. The move in Biogen yesterday was extraordinary. It's up 40% on a, on a stock with an amazing market cap. This is a big cap uh, of the biotech names. This is one of the bigger cap market cap names. Absolutely explosive move to the upside yesterday. The Alzheimer's excitement of, over their Alzheimer's uh, potential drug uh, and where that is in the whole process. Definitely getting people very, very excited because this has hit the stock in the past and now we're seeing some of the positives of some positive news at least coming out about where they are right now and, and what the potential could potentially be. So, healthcare was absolutely rocking yesterday. You had Lilly, you had the Anthem, you had United Health, you had AbbVie, you had Cigna, you had Merck across the board, UNH just flying to the upside yesterday. Healthcare had a really nice day up about 5% yesterday. Biotech, depending on which one of the major indices you want to look at, but it was up 6 or 7% yesterday. Just an explosive move as well. And it's just been an incredible move when you really look at the speed and the velocity of what we are watching in front of us right now going into the election on Monday, 
on election day on Tuesday, post-election day on Wednesday, and, and some of the interpretations of what's going on now. So there's still uh, a, a debate going on right now for the presidency and, and numbers and all that's going to maybe, and we talked about this, this is going to take some time to probably shake out. So we'll see how this does shake out. But certainly right now, it looks like Pre uh, Vice President Biden is in the lead for sure right now. But uh, a lot of questions being asked. On the other hand, you're looking at the Senate and you're seeing that it looks like the Republicans are holding on to the Senate. At least that's the preliminary. That's what things look like right now. So uh, that seems to be something what we are seeing right now seems to be something that is soothing the markets because the markets are absolutely flying again today in the pre-market. We were up about 325 points on the Dow. The Nasdaq was up to 70 and we were looking at the S&P up about 52 points. You got over towards the open. Holy smokes. The Dow was really flying. It was pushing up towards 400. Then you look over at the NASDAQ, gave back a little bit of what they had in the pre, still up over 200 points, and the S&P kind of hanging in there where it was. 15 minutes into the day, we're up over 430 points on the Dow. Then you got a 245-point move to the upside in total when you're looking over at the NASDAQ. 62 points to the upside in the S&P. You get the idea. We are absolutely flying. Right now, I'm just looking. 460 points on the Dow to the upside. NASDAQ, 284. S&P, 67 points. That's a 2% move again. And where's the VIX? Trading right around 27. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. Now we've taken so much out of the VIX that uh, it seems like it actually might be getting on the cheap side, believe it or not. If we're going to continue to have these kind of unbelievable moves, these 2% moves on a daily basis, and that's kind of what we're looking at right now so far this week, then we, we can see some of that, that pullback that we had yesterday, absolutely dramatic pullback, maybe a little bit much. We'll see. Today, 27. Yesterday, it was trading 29. We'll see where that all shakes out. When I looked at the Dow early on, Every single one of the Dow 30 was in positive territory, every single one of them green. That is a little unusual, folks, because understand this, even on a 400 or 500 point move to the upside or the downside, you are going to have a few stocks usually that are going to stand out that are actually going against the grain. We are not seeing that today. Everything in the green, at least early on, everything in the green. What's really leading it? Well, we got some tech names, Apple, Microsoft, obviously Salesforce.com. That's another one of those names that has been very, very powerful. Then take a look over at some of those industrial names that are powering to the upside, Caterpillar, Honeywell, 3M. You throw in Boeing, and you've got a pretty nice cocktail of a lot of different areas within the industrial space moving to the upside. There's no doubt about that. So the industrial's up about 2% early on. Tech up about 2.25% early on. Semiconductor's up over 2.5% early on. I'm going to hit that in just a second. Then you've got healthcare. That had that amazing day yesterday, up about 1% today. Materials. Now, that does stand out because we weren't getting that follow-through that we were looking for with materials. Today, we are getting that close to 3% move to the upside in the materials space. I've been talking about some of these names, Freeport and U.S. Steel and ArcelorMittal and a lot of different names that, that are in that whole area, in the materials area, but that having a really good day. Financials even get, getting involved a little bit today, up about 1.5%. So I mentioned the semiconductors. Qualcomm, that's up 11% today in this post earnings. And a lot of that, well, because of what they were talking about, 5G and the demand for the 5G chip. Well, certainly propelling right now because that's an explosive move to the upside, 11 12% for uh, Qualcomm. We're getting some follow through as well in NVIDIA. That's up about 2.5%. Had a really nice day yesterday. I talked about that for unusual option activity yesterday on the show. Stock had already moved from 541 up towards 549 by the time we were doing the show. But early on, as you know here, anybody at Margaret Revelia knows, we saw that hit very early in some of those big explosive numbers of buying very, very short term. Those are going to be expiring on Friday. Today, now we're here, we're here at Thursday. Might not have to worry so much about that, though, because that stock's making another move today. By the way, and I'll hit a little bit of that in just a second. Tesla, Netflix, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, you get the idea. Names all strong right now. In the early parts of this session, we're 34 minutes into the trading day. We are still looking at a NASDAQ that's climbing even further. It's almost up 300 points, 2.5% move to the upside for the NASDAQ. So really, really explosive. The Dow up, not so bad. It's up 1.7%, but 460 points on that side of things, 2% move on the S&P. So I said something about NVIDIA, and I'm going to talk about some unusual. We had it for unusual option activity yesterday at the halftime report on CNBC. That was pretty fun with Scott and the gang and talking about a lot of things, all the political side of what we were seeing and some of the moves. 
Well, let me tell you this. NVIDIA hit again. And it was the first name on the list today that hit for unusual option activity. Where was the stock trading? 567. Let's just go back for just one minute. Yesterday, stock was trading 541, and they were buying the 550 strike calls that expire. Those seem to be doing pretty good. They started off paying $2. I believe they paid all the way up to $6 for those options. Well, they're at least intrinsically worth 17 now. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. We like to say giddy up once in a while around here. That is a giddy up. There's those people who question unusual option activity. Not every one of them is going to work. We all know that. But I'll tell you what, you can question it all you want. But how about that? How you like me now? Some of those haters out there. <laughs> November 6 expiring today. Uh, uh, what we're seeing today, the November 6 expiring, which is tomorrow, Friday the 570s. Now that's what the stock trading at 567. These are just $3 out of the money. They're paying about 3 to $5 for these. Just remember this, extremely short term. This is today and tomorrow. Stocks got to get up and through this 570 level for these to start to really produce. Now, as I say, they were purchased for about 3 to $5. 3,400 of those were being bought today. Guys, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful day. The markets look like they want to completely continue to run to the upside. Maybe we get to like yesterday where we kind of flatline for part of the day. Might give you a little chance to maybe get outside, enjoy the day, get some fresh air in front of you, not have to think about the coronavirus and all the rest of what's going on. Put on your golf duds and maybe even swing the club around a little bit. Could be a day like that for me. Guys, have a great day of trading. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It's going to be a really busy day tomorrow. We got the take. We got the, the, the noon show. We got the 5 o'clock show. Oh, we got the cocktail hour. We got all kinds of stuff going on tomorrow. It's going to be busy. I'm going to be hitting up with uh, my, my good friend Dave Lee on WCCO, hitting football and finance on Fridays. We do that triple F every single week. It's a lot of fun locally here, but you can tap into it too, WCCO.com. This is a great, great radio station. Been around Twin Cities for a really long time. I participate with those guys all throughout the week. These guys are great people. They do a wonderful job. By the way, Twin Cities Lime, love it, man. If you get a chance, go to the Minnesota and get out there and grab, grab some of those hats and some of those shirts, some of those shorts, whatever you want. Got some weather changing out there. You could get some golf stuff and you could get some winter stuff and take care of everything. And you'd be taking care of some of those proceeds going to the Twin Cities Lime folks. And we really would, would appreciate that, the Twin Cities Lime Foundation. Folks, have a great day of trading.